Okay, so I would describe myself as a documentary photographer. Um, I tend to shoot portraits, landscapes, street photography and still lives, but it's not just limited to that. I'm constantly thinking of different approaches and different things that I can do, which will become more apparent later on. And I'm, even though I'm a documentary photographer, I do consider myself to be a fine art photographer and I'm quite interested in fine art photography as well. Um, I think my work is probably not as much that side of things yet, but I, I do feel it will go towards that side of things. And I am really interested in exhibitions and photo books, especially. So this is uh, just one of my first projects that I did called Between Places. Um, I was, I'd left university, didn't know what to do myself, travelled around South America, had no idea what I was doing. And I um, started teaching photography and I was living in Lincoln and Nottingham kind of on my own away from my mates so I started to document the area and I didn't really it was almost like a bit of a discovery of who I was and what was going on at the time and living in an environment away from all my friends and this was all shot on film um, <clears throat> using a Hasselblad camera this was another project I did at the same time called Goose Fair um, based in Nottingham as well that's just being picked up by the National Fairs archive as well they're going to um, keep hold of that which is really nice um, I also shot some 5.4 large format portraits of Nottingham Gay Pride as well. This is one of the best pictures from that series. And film was a big part of what I was doing. I was really into my film photography. It's kind of all I really knew. Um, digital had just come out as I was leaving university. And I always struggled with digital. Um, it never really looked the way I wanted it to. Um, it kind of looked like a bit of a fake image in many ways in my eyes. It never really was what I wanted it to be. But that kind of will come on later. Um, I, there's many ways in which I work. I do shoot 35mm film still. And 120, mostly. I'd like to get back into large format. And I shoot digital as well now. Um, <coughs> the, uh, my most successful project is To and From the North Circular, which started before I started my MA here at UH. Um, and that was my major project to come out of my masters but it actually started, I was a bit obsessed with the North Circular Road I was travelling through it a lot um, and I actually started to look on um, social media to see what people were saying about it and I was quite interested, it was such a negative environment everyone was always really um, sort of I hated passing through it and the, what interested me, it, me about it is the fact that people lived there. People lived on it. It was full of different communities and, and what it must have been like to live there by the side of this road. Um, and it was unnoticed as well. So I looked, on, I looked on Instagram a lot and you found these standard usual, usual pictures you'd expect of the road but then more quite intriguing ones. Uh, people that were constantly by the road or things people had found. And I thought this would be something, quite a lot of strange images as well. Um, <coughs> a nuclear bomb. Um, or people just fuming at the fact they're stuck in traffic. And accidents that were happening. Um, the project got picked up recently for, an ex, uh, for, for a magazine, uh, for a theme on the familiar. Um, work based out entity and origin and unique definitions of home. Um, and that was a, an edition also based on Europe as well. Um, I'll just briefly show you some more pictures from that series. Uh, I'm actually in the process of re-editing this at the moment as well, hopefully to make a book. <coughs> so if anybody does know of any book designers or anything like that, I'd really like some help. Uh, it's kind of a mixture of portraits. I would, I'd find people, stop them, ask their permission. Um, this is a bit more of an experimental approach that happened towards the end of the project, where I was taking pictures of things that were going on. It was quite often things that I found, or things that I walked past. There was a lot of walking involved. Uh, this was a group of lads that I nicknamed the Stonebridge Boys, because it was near Stonebridge Park, who were... Uh, they asked me to buy them cigarettes, but I managed to not buy them cigarettes and convince them to post for a photograph. So it's quite, quite good. Um, <clears throat> although they definitely gave me false names, those weren't their names. So I, I, I actually found the 
the area and the surroundings quite beautiful. Um, it, it often surprises me that people do find it quite gritty. I, I know it's gritty, but at the same time, um, I think there's a lot of unnoticed things that you can find around there, like these man-made man sculptures of things that have happened. Um, again, this was a bit, a bit later on, this more documentary approach, which kind of impacts on what I'm going to show you next as well. And there's lots, it is also a bit of a time capsule as well. This was a pub, um, and these sorts of places are disappearing now. You know, it's, it's, a, <coughs> it's a strange environment, it's a very strange environment. Um, this is the picture of Wilhelmina, Wilhelmina that was uh, used in the Portrait of Britain Awards recently. And obviously, pollution and the effects on the environment is a big thing um, within that particular area. Um, so, that was something that took me about two years, two and a half years, I would say. Look, I started shooting it just before my MA, but none of, those, none of that work actually really went into it that I started beforehand. It was, I didn't realise what I was doing at the beginning. I was taking these pictures around there, and it kind of came out eventually in my MA. This is the image of John, the security guard, that came forth in the portrait salon. It was featured on these sites as well. Uh, I was nominated and shortlisted for the Barter Award at the Photographer's Gallery, which is a book award um, for it to be made into a book. Unfortunately, I didn't. Uh, if, you, if you win, you get about £20,000 towards it. If you um, are shortlisted, you get about £1,000. So I've been entering quite a lot of book awards because I want to make it into a book. Um, but I'm very aware of my limited skills as a graphic designer. Um, so, but it's something I'm still looking towards uh, doing as well. Um, it was selected by uh, Photograd, uh, John Tonks and Christina Santa Anna and Nick Ballon selected it. Um, and I, I loved what Christina said about it, the fact that it was vibrant, full of light and seemingly tranquil, which was a nice feeling because it, it felt more in tune with what I thought about it rather than it be, because I, th I, I still think it can be quite beautiful at times. Um, <coughs> and this has encouraged me even more to still try and make it into a book, because they were quite happy about it as a project in its own right. Um, these are some images of the Portrait of Britain Award, which is on these JC Decau screens, all nationwide. You might have seen it, it's about 100 images selected. Um, that's Waterloo, Angel, and uh, St Pancras. Um, so the future of the North Circuit is, I'd quite like to do a local exhibition. Um, I'm quite intrigued on, after having exhibited in public spaces now with the uh, Portrait of Britain Award, I'd, I'd quite be intrigued to see about how I could exhibit these pictures around and on the North Circular in some way. That's something that quite appeals to me. I'm not sure how possible that would be quite yet. And I'm also interested in making it into, I think it's, I want to make it into a quite a nice book, not really a zine type image that uh, I've got at the top there, more the bottom, the bottom sort of book. So that's, that's what I'm looking to do with those. Um, I've also been doing, uh, around about this time, I was also shooting images of students that I was teaching. And that's something I quite like to continue with. So if anybody's got any ideas or um, projects that they'd like to do, I'm quite interested in maybe shooting international students here at University of Hertfordshire, I think that could be quite an interesting project. Um, <coughs> so I'm often looking for short-term uh, ideas as well as long-term projects because my, my big projects do take me a long time. This is a, something that I started this summer, which was a project on the uh, Notting Hill Carnival. Um, I, I've always kind of flirted with the idea of photographing the carnival but I've always never really wanted to be stuck in the crowd when it's so busy because I didn't, I didn't feel as though they'd be the pictures that I'd get, I, I'd want to get, then it's not my sort of work. So I've decided now, that I, I, what I did here is I got up about six o'clock in the morning when it's really quiet and I was photographing the people that make the carnival happen. Um, so this guy's collecting rubbish. This, was a, this is just as people started to come out to enjoy the day of it. Um, bits of rubbish and this was a guy, a lad that was helping his dad cook food in front of Trike um, <clears throat> that's something I'll probably continue with the, the whole point of doing short term projects or throwing that in this year is because I wanted to try and get some editorial uh, assignments 
we'll try and get this work used editorially. I sent this around a lot of newspapers, magazines. Uh, I got some good feedback from The Guardian, but they actually wanted to go with the more typical carnival scene. Um, but that's just encouraged me to really build on this. And I'm probably going to keep going back now and shoot it over a period of years and build it up. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and see where it goes from there. I think it might have more effect that way. Um, it did get picked up by Crack Magazine, which was great. Um, I've also, another project, which was short term, um, I photographed a biscuit factory this summer. This is, a lot of my project, current projects have been based in London or around London. Uh, because of teaching a lot as well, uh, I often want to do things that are accessible or on my doorstep or things I can, walking's a huge part of what, what I do. You know, I tend to just pick up my camera and go and wander a lot of the time. So because of the floods in Carlisle, which is my hometown, um, I did a project on the biscuit factory. Um, and the, and they're often known as the Cracker Packers. Um, so this took a bit of organising, <coughs> a few months organising. Uh, LinkedIn was extremely useful. That's what got me into the factory, using LinkedIn, contacting managing directors and executives through LinkedIn. And this is something I shot over three days in the factory. Again, with the idea of getting branching out into more editorial work. Um, I sent this to uh, the newspapers and stuff. Again, again, they were very, they really liked it, but they just didn't think it was for the Guardian or the Telegraph, really. But it was really nice one to get back. These are probably portraits that I will enter in competitions in the coming year as well. This is the famous water biscuit that they make there. Over 200 years old now in the factory. Um, so that, that gives you a brief sort of idea of what, I, what, what my work is currently like. Obviously, a lot of that is digital. Uh, so what I decided to do over my MA was I realised that film was costing me so much money. There was the time element involved. Um, and so I realised that I needed to teach myself how to use digital in a better way, or in a way that would work for me. And that's really what my focus was on in that project. And I, 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 I can do that now. I'm really happy with it. I've been totally embraced digital. What tends to happen when I'm working is I'll, get, I'll, get, uh, I'll keep working on specific projects. And then I'll think, I need a bit of a change. So I'll try and do something else. So I'll break off and go out and do it. So I'll always have odd days where I go and do something else. So this is something that I started working on whilst shooting the North Circular project. And it was just to give me a bit of variety and a bit of change. And actually, some of the things that happened on this early on ended up affecting what I did on the North Circular project. And that's what often happens. You know, it's these little self-discoveries. Um, and I love, this, this is really useful because I love showing the students this and how that can affect, them, uh, affect your work. So, you know, not just working on specific projects that you've got, but doing those bits of personal work, um, sh short-term and long-term. So this is, um, I've called it LDN here because I've had about three working titles for it and I just, as soon as I have a working title, I hate it and I move on from it straight away. It's either called The London Project, which is a rubbish title. The North Circular Project was called Roadside for about two years before I came up with the name for it. Um, <coughs> so it's called LDN at the minute because that's what I've named a lot of the files. Um, and, it, and it was just a shorter way of kind of saying London. So this is something I started in 2014, going back to film. Um, it was important for me to go back to film because I missed being in the moment of taking the photograph and just constantly thinking about what's in front of me and what I'm photographing. Whenever you're shooting digital, the instinct is to turn and look at what you've got. They call it uh, chimping, they call it. Um, now and it's and that's brilliant. It's you can't. I don't think you can avoid doing it when you're shooting digital. But what I've often found before is um, when I'm shooting film, especially using this camera, which is as a viewfinder where you look down and through. Um, I actually get a lot more people say yes to portraits this way because it's it's less in your face and attacking and invasive, um, and people are often more intrigued about the camera, especially nowadays. You know. Um, and what I'll often find is I'll be taking pictures, find something very interesting over here, and then go, oh, what's that? And I'll just take a picture, and it'll be that shot that's, that's the one that works, or 
you know, it, it, you can be more in the moment shooting this way. So this is to go the complete opposite of what I was doing at, uh, at the North Circular stuff. I started shooting black and white film with flash at night. And I was just finding things on the street to photograph. And I, I was quite influenced by Larry Sultan and uh, Evidence. I've forgotten his name now. Um, there's another guy who, who did that. I think it was, was it Mark Mandel? Um, <clears throat> so I was just photographing. I, I'm not sure if this is going to be part of the, pro the London project, or it might be a separate thing in its own right, but I just wanted to show you guys, because I've not really, I've not really shown this to anyone yet. Um, and so these were very random things that I just found. I was very influenced by trying, how you could make interesting compositions and because probably at the same time I'm shooting these found things on the North Circular, Circular but obviously I was dependent on the light being interesting. Using that flash though made me go and use flash on one or two of my pictures for the North Circular work which you can see with the, the ladybird on the leaf and things like that so um, you know it really it did help. Then I decided to photograph in a way where I was stepping back from people and photographing things that were going on around me. Um, and I was photographing in key sort of places in London. Uh, so I was using a, a 150mm lens. So it looks like I'm close here, but I wasn't, you know, as close as it looks. Uh, and photographing commuters, people going about their business. And then I started to incorporate the flash as well. Obviously, I asked this lady. Uh, I got talking to someone that she was with, so, and it sounds really horrible. He, his photograph wasn't that great, but it gave me an in to get her photograph, and she was already sat like that. And I was really interested in, uh, especially this project, I was interested in how negative people can be about London and the north south divide. Me being a northerner, I've lived there for, lived there for like seven years now. You know, I love London. Um, it was 2014 when I was shooting a lot of this. I'm still shooting it now. This one's a lot. This was just last summer. This one. Um, <clears throat> the referendum was in everyone's minds. We knew the vote was going to happen. Um, I did still stop people, talk to them, and take their picture. But again, stepping back, um, I started to photograph landscapes. So uh, again, this is a different camera. Uh, so. 6x7 or 6x5 frame, so it was a bit wider. So there's, there's a lot of pictures here. I've included, some of you will notice there's two, just because um, I quite like both of them. I'm thinking which ones I should choose. Um, again, yeah, stepping back. And so this was, I wanted to show what, there's different sides to London. I think everyone thinks about London, they think it's just a city, but it's actually made up of lots of other places. It's very suburban at parts. It's not all nice and rich and wealthy and beautiful. Uh, there is two parts of it. I also was quite intrigued about, you know, I'm using black and white film and I wanted it to hark back to, the, I always think of these timeless photographs of London, you know, by, by these amazing documentary photographers who photographed it throughout the years. So there's, um, <coughs> yeah, there's, this is one that stuck with me as well, uh, with that, with that uh, headline. Obviously, I mean, I think that's the back of a sport page, but at the same time, it's still, still something that um, grabbed my attention. And again, workers are always things that I like to photograph. Is it, I'm not sure, this is the last time I edited this project down was just before Christmas and since then over the summer I think I shot 65 rolls of film um, and so I'm still retouching some of that some of the new stuff is in here some of this was also shot on um, out of date film as well but I quite like the look of some of the, the damage to it as well uh, you can see bits of it in the bottom right of this corner. There's another one later on. Some of the film's fine. <coughs> and it, uh, yeah, this one appealed to me because I quite, I quite liked the idea of it being timeless. This looks a bit 70s. 
but also at the same time, I mean, there are there are pictures of people on mobile phones. There's a lot more landscapes that I've been shooting as well. This is one recently. This is a new one as well from summer. I mean, I think the I, I think this sort of project for me is probably going to shoot more suit more of a. Maybe a, a, a book, but maybe more like a zine as well. There's a, there's a dog, sorry. <laughs> can you see it? You can make it out. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's heartbreaking, that makes me feel sorry for that dog. Again, this is another, another shot that was kind of damaged, but through using out of date film. But I, th I quite like that. I'm not, I'm not sure that one fits in yet in a minute. But I mean, some of the, these are kind of, um, it's where I'm at now. So this is, this is my current work. Really, yeah, I'm, um, I suppose what I wanted to do is just show you this stuff. You can see what I've done before. And any feedback or any questions anybody's got would be great. Series of work. Do you? I'm a bit uncertain of it to be honest at times, but then I see it all the time. Yeah. I think that yeah, definitely. Um, I I've told myself that I don't want to do anything with this project until it comes out as a book in its own right, and that's ready. Um, that is, um, I'm in my head. Sometimes I'm saying that this might be something that I just continue with for a few more years. Yet, um, I suppose part of the reason why I wanted to show it here today was to kind of help me answer a few questions. Um, I definitely think there will be some coupling of images. Because I know in my mind already there's groups of things of where I've shot, how I've shot. Obviously you'll notice that some images are square, some images are rectangular, you know, um, portrait and landscape. Um, and there's things that I do think, it's almost having put this together for, for today, um, I'm starting to think there's almost might be some chapters, like they're separated into some chapters, um, but definitely as a book. I would say, and in, in the book dummy that I'm making at the minute for North Circular, you know, I am pairing up some images in there. I quite like the idea of, of having open space and different, um, obviously it doesn't work for every project, but I quite like the idea of, you know, you don't have to have just one picture on the right hand side all the time, you know, pairing images together. That's already done in my dummy for now, for the North Circular work. Um, I've, I've yet to start the dummy for this, that will happen once I finish the next batch of retouching. Can I, can I ask a couple of quite silly questions? No, no, keep it won't be silly. <laughs> One is like when everybody's a photographer now, because we're all constantly snapping away with mobile phones, how, is, how do you make what you're doing consciously different from that and, and as it were, more significant than that? Because obviously there's this massive proliferation photographs that are flying around all the time. Yeah, sure. So wh what is it that um, makes your photographs something that we want to stay with and, 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 and spend time on rather than just flicking them between our phones and sort of putting on wacky captions and putting on apps where people can suddenly turn into a, a gorilla or something? Do you know what I mean? I'm just yeah. saying, what separates your kind of very serious and considered ph photography from the mass of crazy digital photos that are flying around all the time? And is that something that you have to constantly be thinking of when you're making your work? De definitely, without doubt, you know, definitely. I, 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 I think 
there can be at times a bit of a lack of recording the times now. You know, um, and it's almost like one, one of the things that's really on my mind is, you know, I was, at, uh, I don't know if anybody went to Strange and Familiar at the Barbican this summer, and it was, it was amazing, absolutely wonderful. There's all these great pictures of kids. We're going to lose all that. It's not going to exist. All these amazing pictures of kids running down the street, you know, because you can't take pictures of kids anymore. Well, there was, there was um, that side show as well. There was also, which I think has resonance with what you're doing, so all these kind of very trans transitional things. Yeah. You know, that, so those moments between are, are often captured in, in, in that kind of um, more object way. You know, it, it's, it's very disposable or, yeah. it beca it, or it becomes a kind of quite momentous. So but that, I, I found that film really fascinating just because it just showed very, very ordinary street scenes, very ordinary things. Yeah. They seem so fresh because of that. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think it, it, do, it can, like, I do feel that some of this is is harking back to that in a way. Um, I think the good thing is, is film is more relevant than ever. You know, I think people can be quite dismissive of film, but actually there's, there's, the proof is out there. There's amazing photographers still using it. And, and in commercial and advertising work as well. You know, uh, Spencer Murphy, Laura Panic, they're big advocates for that. And it is a, it is a different, it's a completely different way of working. I think, but I, I think one of the best ways we've moved on now is that, that that debate is now almost dead and buried. It's not, are you a film photographer, are you a, a, a digital photographer? It's, it's, these are ways of working. What, you know, how are you going to work? Um, I hope quality is a big part of it. You know, I, Sorry, Matt, I was just going to ask a question there really about, um, just to decide, first of all, I think the, well, the side effect, I think we're partly responsible saying that the, the relationship between uh, film and digital is kind of buried as a, an argument, but there is still, it seems to me, a very distinct sense that while both are kind of a cast of the, the original experience, there is something, if only in the most rudimentary sense of light touching the film through a lens and then being processed chemically, yeah. there's something more about the embedding of that uh, original quality of light in the, um, the film, which is distinctly different in my mind to the interpolation of the computer, which is more of a synthetic reconstruction of the, the scene. But, I mean, no matter how good the digital gets in terms of its kind of quality, you still have a sense of a much more complex interface between the original experience and, uh, and the product, whereas in the film, yeah. because of the simplicity of sort of semi-chemical exchange, it feels much closer to the original. I was wondering if you still have that feeling about it, or you kind of, is that really finished for you now, that kind of relationship to film? And, uh, oh, it's... Visual? You, the way I got my head round digital film was, uh, I think I was here having a lecture with someone actually, um, and someone mentioned to me, because I just, I just hadn't thought about it in a certain way before, and what I, what I find really fascinating is, you, if you shoot a good image on film, it can be a good picture straight away, you know, pretty much straight away, whereas if you shoot an image on digital, it often doesn't have, yeah, you can get an all right picture, you can get a nice picture, but it often doesn't have that edge that it needs. It's kind of definitely dependent on what you do to it afterwards in the processing. Um, and obviously you can use the dark room, do other things. I, in fact, all, all of these are retouched, they're scanned, they're retouched. Um, I have decided to leave marks in certain areas sometimes on, not, not like lots of marks, but as you go later on, um, like this one, you know, I quite like the faded bits of it. It's, it's, yeah, making that connection made it, a, it made a lot more sense to me. And I do, depending on what camera I pick up, I'm a different photographer when I go out, I would say, definitely. Because I'm thinking about it differently. 
You know, I'm, t I'm totally thinking about it differently. And I'm, I'm, I'm probably a different photographer if, I'm, if I know I've got black and white film or colour film in my camera as well. Those are the distinctive um, issues, aren't they? In the, 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 the <coughs> film is camera now. It's a much more kind of focused attention and before you can risk it, the very least frame a 50, 50 tenths to a quick for a shot. Yeah. Whereas a digital, so you, it's more the sense I'll take 15 shots of this and you found it one good one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's a huge problem. It's a huge problem. That, that, I, I don't think that helps people. I do, I often refer to the students that I, th I feel. I feel I've benefited from being taught and brought up with film, whereas a lot of them have missed that out. And it's a real shame, actually. I mean, luckily, we're putting a lot of effort in with our first year, level four students, to, and they're really loving film. They're really getting it, you know. Um, but when you know you've only got so many roles and you have to get an image, that can be kind of a nice pressure at times. Um, and the fact that obviously with, with one of the biggest issues about technology is people go, ah, sort that out after. But often you can't. There's some problems you can't sort out after. Sorry, Stephen. No, yeah, uh, thanks for the presentation. It's excellent. One, my question is, you had to choose like a two or three photographs that you thought um, really pointed the way ahead for you as a you know, photographer, whatever you are. Um, this project, or uh, I'm, out of all the stuff that you've shown us, it, it struck me that there's it, it's going in quite a lot of different directions. Because, yeah, you know, you've got the, the last image you showed, and it looked a bit like, I mean, it's a great image, but you felt you, with no disrespect, you felt you'd seen images like that quite a, a, a lot before. Think about you know Cartier Bresson iconically. Sure. You know where you have those kind of defining figures in the middle of the shot, and something ironic behind. And then there were other bits where you were really giving the uh, looker a bit of a hard time, in that there was no kind of obvious aesthetic hook on which to hang the image. And I, you know, both are perfectly creditable ways of going. I just, and there were some things in between as well. Sure. You know, like the image of the, um, uh, the House of Parliament. Yeah, yeah. Which was, and I just wondered what your thoughts were about, you know, what the next. Catherine's just appeared, and we're all thinking of, of breath at the moment. We're thinking of breath at the time, <laughs> particularly when she makes an appearance. <coughs> and I'm just thinking, you know, for the next three or four years, when you think about how you want to shape your creative practice, what, what might it be? I think, I think um, the big thing for me is to have maybe more of a narrative in my work, and more of a clear narrative in it. That's what I'm aiming to do. Right. Um, I think I'll always be a documentary photographer in uh, to I quite like this being more experimental actually this this is definitely things but I what I found is the more I shoot and the more little I mean little bits, bits of success are nice because they just give you a bit of confidence we all need confident confidence and I'm probably not that confident in this project at the moment sure. um, just because I keep having doubts about it you know I'm thinking oh is it Maybe my film work's not as strong as my digital work, and th just silly things like that. Um, but I like when I'm out there and in the, in the moment of shooting the film and not thinking about what's on the film and just what I'm doing. I like the fact I'll take some risks and not think about it. Like, oh, I'll, I'll keep the traffic lights in focus and knock everything out of focus and see what happens. Um, and I think, more, yeah, being more experimental is definitely in there. Um, like, and not being frightened to take uh you know obviously i've got some there's some nice compositions and things like that but not being uh frightened to take pictures and pieces of rubbish that can be nice nice composition compositions but also maybe have a bit of an atmosphere and a mood to them um i am definitely interested in um you know that photography can it it can give us a feeling like I, I, I always feel like, I feel quite guilty about this picture. I always feel like I've got to explain, oh, no, 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 she's, she's a really lovely lady. She's really nice, you know, whereas she looks a bit standoffish. She looks like she's going to punch me in the face. But um, she, she was really sweet and she just happened to be sitting that way. But because of that, I, I did actually want to, you know, make sure I've got the shot because of that. That's exactly what I was looking for. I like, I like the idea that you can manipulate for something that way and make people think things. So certainly that's the way that I feel like I'll be going. Um, 
And I think that contemporary photography, especially nowadays, is a lot more risky with narrative and how it plays with those things. I was going to ask a bit about your portraits, and again, sort of slightly, forgive me, slightly sort of rudimentary question about what, for you, what makes a really good portrait, and how would that be different from, say, a painted portrait, where obviously there's a, a period of time usually spent with the sitter and, and a kind of interaction with the model. It's quite interesting that this lady you feel apologetic towards her, because obviously in the moment you got her, yeah. what's projected is, is perhaps something quite hostile or quite sort of, you know, we might make assumptions about the character of this lady based on this image, which may not be true. And in a painting, that might be mitigated over quite a long period of time. But sure. In the moment that you caught her, she was that. So, for you, what's what are the important things about a portrait, and what you you know what what makes you pleased with something? Um, it's, it's, it's probably a common. I think it's a lot of things coming together. Um, if if I'm honest, there's lots of portraits that I take that aren't successful, that don't work, and. Um, I, I can't kind of put, it's a very difficult thing to explain. I used to walk around and ask everyone I saw, just because it was about almost like numbers, like, you know, just getting them through, getting them. Um, and now I'm a lot more selective and I'm a lot more, I, as to who I stop and who I, there are obviously people that interest me. There are obviously people that um, have uh, a look that I find fascinating. Like I, I stopped a guy the other week because he was, um, he had a funny coat on, but he had painting overalls on and some lovely boots, but he was holding a cane. And so it might be the way they're dressed, it might be the way they hold themselves. Um, it, it could, it's a number of things, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna work. Um, I, I've become more and more aware of what I say to people to ask them if I can take their picture. And I've also become um, a lot more of a pain in that I will keep people for longer because I've got more confident in doing it, you know. And sometimes, this, this sounds bad, but sometimes by keeping people for longer, you might get a better picture. It's not that I'm wanting everyone to look pissed off, but... Um, it's like you start to get something quite real coming through. Yeah, or it might, you know what, it might just be that moment that they go, or whatever, or they stop thinking about, I'm being photographed. Yeah. And it's a combination of all these things, because obviously, as well as those things, and, you know, I've not even talked about the light yet, or what's in the background, or what's happening at a certain time. It's, it, and I think it's often that with photography. It's, uh, and that's why you've got to take a lot of pictures as well, I think. You know. so, certainly, you know, for a while anyway. And it's just, they, these things come together. And often I won't notice until afterwards, there is that time that you do have that gut instinct and you go, yes, I can't wait to get, to get back and see that. Okay, and you can kind of know. Like the, the, the picture of John, the security guard, you know, um, I mean, photographers are, not, are famously bad editors in, in terms of selecting their work. You know, we all need help from designers and art directors or whatever. Um, I never even chose that picture. My wife chose it. She said, why aren't you doing anything with this? I, I chose it, I retouched it, I made, did it, and she went, you need to enter that into competitions. Is that the one that won? That came fourth in the portrait salon, and it, came, it, get, it to get in the portraits, you've got to enter the Taylor Wessing Awards, and it's for everyone who doesn't get in the Taylor Wessing Award. And I got to the last 150 of the Taylor Wessing Award that year. Um, I don't know which image it was, I'm assuming it was that one. Is that a new style profile? Sorry for the TV. Uh, no, it's <coughs> it will be. <laughs> it will be. Um, I will have. Just to just get off the line. I just want to comment. If you come back to this one, I've noticed you've got a couple of images of women, which are startling because they are not treated differently to the images of men. I think that's. This, I love this image, I think this is an amazing picture and she's just got such directness and so on. And it makes you remember that, that you know, so often the images you see of women aren't, you know, she's inhabiting herself perfectly. Yeah. That's really straightforward. There is no, there's no screen as it would be between them. And I just think that that's an interesting little sort of 
thing that I've noted that has come through with that in your work, and I think it's, it's great. Um, and I'm interested in the documentary process, and, and particularly in this, because I come from journalism, I'm used to documentary photography being accompanied by text, and I'm interested in this, do you, do you choose not to incorporate text? Would you incorporate text if you did this as a book? Would you want these images to stand without words? I mean, it's, it's definitely something I would consider. It's de you know, I would, I would, I would, I think I'm more open now to any possibility, and and, and you've got to treat each project differently. You know, I've, I've spoke about this referring back to the North Circular work, but obviously, really, there, you know, this is on its own. It's different, and so it will be treated like that, especially. Um, I, I could definitely see this potentially having some text with it. What that text will be is yet, yeah, I don't know. I've actually, I've actually been, whilst I've been doing this, I've researched a lot of poetry about London as well. I was looking at a lot of things like that and a lot of um, old, really 18th century and uh, early 19th century photographs of London that they had, of just these old cobble streets. And I was even thinking of going back to some of those places to photograph as well. Um, so sometimes, sometimes these are little avenues you go down that don't lead anywhere, and you go, "That was a bad idea." But you just, you've got. If there's anything that keeps playing on my mind, I've got to try it to figure out whether it was worthwhile or not. I've got an idea. <laughs> if you if you got in contact, I mean, what's in, the stuff on London? I think you know it's really easy to sell. I was thinking, I know somebody. Um, it's a friend of my wife who is a writer in residence for the Piccadilly Mine. Right. And she actually just phoned them up and said, Do you need it? She's an academic. I said, Do you need a writer in residence? You know, it won't cost you very much. Um, and they said yes, pretty much instantly. And it struck me that if you wanted a kind of thematic narrative, it would be fantastic. It could be, you know, perfectly appropriate to choose a line, particularly a line that went, you know, in a funny Direction and they would you capture a wide range of you know different demographics. You also got above ground and over ground, and I, you know, that's also a, you know somebody <coughs> put that in for an impact ground. I think it would if it didn't. Uh, I've had a similar funding, idea before. Actually. I think you should. So, yeah, or something really like it. You know, if it didn't get funding from an impact grant at university level, you know, we've got Sam's got a budget, I've got a budget, contingency budget, and we. Yeah, I can imagine it'll be a you know, yeah, three hundred thousand quid well spent. Or a bus route. Yeah. 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 I thought of that before as well. Yeah. Yeah. The number the number eighteen is my local bus and I thought I'd really yeah. 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 Um, it's always, to be honest, it's, hard, I think it's, it's always on my mind, really. So, um, in the European edition of Hashtag Photography magazine, um, they selected some of the North Circular stuff. And yeah, I, I, it is always in my mind, but maybe with this thing, it was definitely in the background, but it was more of an atmosphere. And I think that was for the first time that I maybe had the confidence to maybe portray people a bit negatively and maybe a bit more of a, a mood of isolation or loneliness or you know there's, there's an image um, of uh, some Muslim women stood together that's as a group and there's an image it probably I don't think it works but it's things that I, I wouldn't have taken that picture before um, you know that as well um, it's yeah, it's, it's, I think it's definitely there. I'm not sure. I, I, I did want this project to be ambiguous, though, as well. So it's to show the positives and the negative, but to be there as a feeling. Because, um, I mean, it's two years on now since I started this, and that was the start of the referendum, and obviously now we're going to see what happens. Um, I don't think you can't... I, I, th I find it impossible to photograph the times now and not be influenced by it. What I did make a conscious decision of was not ramming it down your throat. Like I could, there was a point where I did go out and there was all these leave 
you know, you'd see a St George's cross with leave written on it, on, hanging off people's balconies. And that to me was too much. And so I didn't particularly want... And I've seen a lot of pho photographers covering that sort of thing as well. And I, I, I wanted this just to be a bit softer, but, but there. I hope for, that'd be, you know, if you think that is there, that'd be a great thing to find out. And, uh, okay, thanks, Matt. No worries. Thank you.